I take a deep breath to calm down and gaze at the setting sun as it pours through the trees and paints them red. Then, I close my eyes. Huh? At first, the voice has not reached me in my daydreaming. You must not eat in the library. The reproachful voice at last brings me back. I realise I realize the voice is directed at me as I stare blankly at the book of a half eaten roll and left on my desk. Sister Daria. Oh, oh my. I cut my head in confusion at Sister Basquiat, who now seems somewhat pleased. She smiles charmingly. That's the first time you call me by my first name. Uh, it's probably because I've been spacing out. I've crossed a line called by a teacher. By calling, by calling teacher by her first name. I'm sorry. That's fine. Who's you opening up to me? Should I call you Mr. Ray from now on? Sister Basket puts her hand to her cheek bashfully and. I respond with a vague smile. I usually can't handle her well, but... Ah, right. She's been in the library. As a member of the library council, you ought to follow the rules. Why? Why do I not feel like the same dislike as usual? Sister Basket puffs out her cheeks intentionally and I feel my facial muscles relax into a smile. Seeing this, she smiles too. Oh, that's a relief. I thought you seemed down, so I was a little worried. You finished on Shirley too. Does that mean your stomach hurt? Having no appetite, I only nibbled on a single bread roll I brought with me. I don't really feel sick, it's just... What is it? Well, I have a problem. The letter sent us a prank. And Mayori is still depressed. Ah. You are at a loss of how to answer my question in class too. I'm sorry. It's fine. Bible class is you to face yourself and God. Not being able to answer itself is kind of answer. It's a religious way of thinking, I think, but... Thank you. I guess it's Sister Basket's way of looking out for me. Oh, right, Miss Sue. Yeah? Would you come with me to class? She asked me after calling me Miss Sue. After class, I'm walking next to her sister basket down a small path in the woods. She steps lightly as we follow along the path, which is a different one from one I took for orienteering. I never take it anymore, I speak up. So, where are we going? <laughs> hey, finally asked. Huh? We're going to see a preview of a place for early summer hiking. There are a few options of hiking spots. I actually have a member of a council of Mikaya to choose a path. I'd like you to help me narrow down the candidates. Looks like we'll have many opportunities to interact with Nature Academy. I nod at Sister Basquiat as she continues. Sometimes you just need exercise. You should be careful too, Miss Suo, or you'll put on weight. You think so? Yes. You don't need to worry too much about things, but once you get your mid-twenties, you have to be careful. Sister Basquiat is Besides, exercise is good for the nerves too. Ah. Although we often talk about school-related things, I've never really discussed personal topics before. It's a strange feeling, I wonder. How old is she anyway? She of course looks mature, but when she talks this way, I feel like she's around the same age as me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm still old. Maybe she needs a little more. She's still growing, and if you were well at this age, you'll grow even taller. Don't say that, you're going to starve her! Well, um, I'm gonna eat a lot, it all goes to my chest. What, really? At these words, which are just blurted out, Sister Basket looks over my chest and hips, or not in a vulgar way. Speaking of which, she told me to be proud of my chest. 
The booing hours are told that even if I don't like seeing what makes me stand out, it could sound like sarcasm to others. I'll sneak a peek at Sister Basket. Does something matter? No, I was just wondering when I started to grow. I see her run her hands over a habit, touching her full chest and hips. And my face grows red. Usually growth stops after a teenage years, but my person's hips won't stop growing. Such a pain. That was not the type of conversation I was expecting to have with a sister. I'm sure of how to respond, all I can do is force a smile. But I've suddenly realised something. At least I felt uncomfortable. Sister Basket's dreamy nature and her voluptuous body that emphasises her womanhood. They remind me of a late mother. And like an association game, a shrill voice of my stepmother follows. What's the matter? Are you not feeling well? No, I'm fine. Really? I was hoping this would help me feel better. Even though I figured that asking me out here was just a pretext, it still makes me happy to hear. I chase away with thoughts of my stepmother and force a smile. There's a story about how taking a trip can change one's mood. Like hippie? I ask Queen about how Sister Basket often comes to borrow books. She smiles, in a, smiles widely and says, Yes. The hippie motto pops to mind. There's no love and peace, is there? Hmm? Oh, nothing. I'm just talking to myself. Let's go. I'm always such a pessimist. Forcing myself to go along with Sister Basket's goodwill, even if I have to fake it, I strive towards our destination in an attempt to inspire myself. While I'm trying to lift my mood and force myself to find something to enjoy, I narrow my eyes against the gorgeous sunshine pouring through the shadows of the trees and listen to a distant sound of babbling brook. We've easily gone twice the distance we did on our own tearing, but the final stop along Monk Sister Basket's candidate spots is a field of flowers stretching as far as the eye can see. The sight is so spectacular that the moment I see it, I feel my fatigue disappear. What do you think? Is this an appropriate hiking spot? Sister Basket asks, but she said the hiking is set for July. One of the best times to see the flowers would be over? I ask. Sister Basket is first surprised, then looks dejected. I'm encouraged by her cute gesture, which makes her seem young, as well as the field of flowers which I hit in the road of spirit. And I hit the road in high spirits. If only it ended there. It would be better if I were lost. I recall me always soaking wet in the woods. It may be imprudent for me, if you're going to go and save her, but to say it might be better for me to be lost, but. How about Miss Zero? Feels so good. Hearing your careful voice, I let out a deep sigh. I'm saying I'm even more trouble than my always son was. Oh my. Legs? That's just downright lewd. I still a glance at Sister Basket bathing under the shade of a tree and gasp. Although she has entered the water fully clothed, her wet habit clinging to her body leaves little to the imagination. Her plump yet beautiful and elegant bare feet. Her attractive bottom is as ample as those of the medieval paintings decorating the academy. And even though I am a woman, my heart starts to race. The contours of her conspicuous chest, clearly outlined, even through her clinging clothes. The green of the trees reflected on the surface of water, woven together with Sister Basket, makes for a breathtaking tapestry. Although I know I shouldn't stare, I'm unable to take my eyes away. I'm a sir? Yes? It's very refreshing. Won't you join me? Won't you join me, she asks. The Sasakis would be glad you joined. I've reason that's on the mind of never now awkward relationship with my classmates. Now I feel bad. 
大丈夫です私はあまり汗をかきませんでしたのでそうああやっぱり少し太ってしまったからかしら,ら体の線が出ないから甘えてしまうのよね Perhaps she's concerned about her hips as she's innocently rubbing the area around them. Seeing this, I'll start to sweat. I'm already sweating enough. What I just said to Sister Basket was a bold faced lie. But it's spring yesterday, it's very hot. We were walking for a long time, my undergarments are drenched with sweat. If it weren't for Sister Basket, I would have gone in already. Her cherry pink lips, her hips. Captivating movement of her hands over a soft looking belly fascinate me. <laughs> a pleasant silence for us between us, broken only by the gentle sound of our breathing or an occasional splash of drop, of a drop of water. <laughs> hey, Miss Suo. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> Where were you born? The question is sudden, I end up talking openly about my hometown. I also tell her about how I lived alone with my grandfather. <laughs> I see. My hometown is the academy. Huh? There are only women here, but a long time ago, there was a priest who taught theology here. I'm his daughter. I was raised at the academy and graduated here. And when my father died, I took over teaching theology instead. She's been in the academy since birth. I cannot really imagine what sister, the life of Sister Basket is talking about. <laughs> Miss Suo, I wanted to hear your confession today. I thought we got some exercise in a fresh forest there. But it would make it easier to talk about your problems. But it's no good. Well, I know, Zeke, Adam, eh? That's my difficulty imagining your problems. And you probably wouldn't tell me about them anyway. She stops swirling her hands in the water and casts her eyes downward into the surface. As a nun, there are many things I can say. But as an individual, I do not know what to say. So, I don't think I could help you with your troubles. My troubles are not lofty religious ones. Mine are more earthly and mundane. In my silence, Sister Basket stares at the surface of the water. Sister, you said you don't know what to say. But just the fact you've thought so deeply about me makes me happy. It helps a lot. Miss Suo. Her forward brow moves back to her usual amiable smile. She clasps her hands together. That's right. When I was a child, there was a time when I was feeling fearful in the class. I talked to my father about it. My father said this. You should put yourself in their shoes. Shoes? It's an English saying. We should try and look at the things from a real person's perspective. If you switch places with your person, how would you feel? When I heard that, I realised I've only ever been thinking about things from my perspective. Ah. So have I. Your situation may be different from mine, but I hope that will help you. I've only been thinking about it as someone that was as something which was done to me. I've had this done to me before, so I thought this time was the same. But I haven't thought about why the Sarkis would have written that letter. Miyori san. If I think of her troubles from her perspective, perhaps I can find a solution. I apologise. It seems I've missed a mark. Oh, no! This has been really helpful. Really? Her voice sounds like an unsure schoolgirl, and I smile. Thank you, Sister Dahlia. 
filled with gratitude, of course it's Adalia by her first name. Huh? That's not a good face for such a lovely girl to wear. Who says that? We can probably guess to be honest, but we'll find out next episode. So until then, thanks guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Hikari,